May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall go out and shall separate the wicked from the just, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate a great saint from Sweden, a great patron of this continent of Europe, a mother and a mystic. She was a widow and even a third order Franciscan born in the year 1303 in the 14th century. She's one of the most prominent women saints in the Middle Ages. Known for her astonishing revelations documented carefully by her confessors, filling seven volumes. Their accounts of her visions of biblical scenes, especially the nativity and the crucifixion, have greatly inspired their imagery in Christian art, and her devotions have inspired popular piety through the ages. It was, however, for her practical works of charity, living a life of great virtue, that she was canonized and not for her private revelations, which had some harsh things, very harsh things to say about the popes of the time. Bridget then was born in Finista, a place in Sweden. From childhood, the Lord granted her special graces, visions, and an extraordinary understanding of divine mysteries. At the age of seven, she had a vision then of crucified Jesus Christ in all the suffering and sorrow of his passion, which enkindled within her a deep devotion for our Savior. The daughter of a wealthy governor and judge at age 13, Bridget then married Ulf Gudmarsson, a prince who was then 18. They lived happily together for 28 years and had an offspring of eight children, among them St. Catherine of Sweden. Bridget convinced her husband by her own example to live a life of piety and to strive for great holiness. At the age of 32, then Bridget became the lady in waiting to Queen Blanche of Nemours and King Magnus II of Sweden. She was then known for her great charitable acts, especially caring for the sick, but the royalty appeared more content to admire her piety than rather to follow her example. After her youngest son died in the year 1340, she and her husband went to pilgrimage in Spain to Santiago de Compostela. On the return trip, her husband became quite ill. He entered then the Cistercian monastery and died there at the age of 46. Bridget, this time was at the age of 41. She continued to live in the world but became a member of the Third Order Franciscan, spending much time in penance and prayer. At this time, Bridget's visions became more frequent and intense, and she even began to wonder if they were from Satan or the devil. However, God ensured her that they were not, and she was to become his bride, and in fact, his mouthpiece. It was his voice in her visions that dictated to her to found a new religious order, even specifying the details of the rule of that order. That she then founded the Order of the Most Holy Saviour, which we know as the Brigitines, which consisted of a double monastery then for both men and women in Vadstena. Any surplus of money they received was given to the poor, and used to provide books for study. Though Bridget, through Bridget, Christ reprimanded the popes for not returning from Avignon. This is the time when we had three popes, or two popes, one in Rome and one in Avignon. But even calling Clement the Sixth, these are her words, a destroyer of souls worse than Lucifer, more unjust than Pilate and more merciless than Judas. Although 
using these words, she failed to change his mind. Directed by God then to go to the Holy Land in 1371, she set out on the pilgrimage with her family and in the Holy Land, this is where she received detailed visions of episodes of the life of Christ and the places where they are said to have occurred. She returned back to Rome and died on July the 23rd, 1373, at the age of 71. Her remains were taken back to a monastery at Sweden. Canonized then, very shortly after, in 1391, by Pope Boniface the Ninth. We know then she is the patron saint of Sweden, of widows, and also now a patron of Europe. She was this magnificent medieval mystic. Besides being one of the most celebrated saints to come out of Sweden, her writings had this profound effect on medieval piety. Her, her most famous work is her Celestial Revelations, a series of visions of Christ, Mary, and the angels received by herself. This week then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, remember this is the month of the Holy Rosary, we celebrated yesterday. This week we were speaking about hell and the pain suffered by the damned. We say these things out of charity. Why? Because we want not a single soul to be damned. This is why Jesus Christ shed his most precious blood that all men cooperate with his graces and be saved. We speak then about hell. Can we imagine the thought of suffering the violent pains of hell for all eternity in body and soul next to the continual presence of Satan? If you were asked the question, who wants to go to hell at the end of their life, very, very few would say yes. Perhaps those who have sold those, their own souls to the devil. Remember, St. Bridget was a mystic who wrote many revelations on hell and purgatory. In chapter 28 of her revelations, we listen to this unbelievable and somber account of one soul about to be damned. Listen well, so that we, so that this will not be our own example at the twilight of our life in the passage into eternity. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to the bride Bridget about how a man came to be judged before God's tribunal and about the fearsome and horrendous judgment passed on him by God and all the saints. Christ then said to Saint Bridget, I was seated as a judge for all judgment has been given to me and the man came before my judgment seat to be judged. The voice of the father thundered and said to him, woe unto you that you were ever born. Thereafter the voice of the son answered saying, I shed my blood for you and suffered the most bitter and harsh pain for you. But you have separated yourself entirely from it and will have nothing to do with it. The voice then of the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit said, I have searched all the corners of his heart to see if I might find some tenderness or love in his heart, but he is as cold as ice and as hard as stone, and I have nothing to do with him. The three voices then of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were immediately transformed into one voice, a single voice, and this voice thundered and said, by no means shall the kingdom of heaven be given to you. By no means shall the kingdom of heaven be given to you. The mother of mercy then, the Virgin Mary, was silent and did not open up her mercy. For he who was to be judged was unworthy to receive or enjoy her mercy. And all the saints cried out with one voice saying, it is divine justice for him to be externally exiled and separated from your kingdom and from your joy. 
All those then in the fires of purgatory said, no pain, no pain here is so bitter or harsh that is enough to punish your sins. You deserve to endure much greater torments and you will therefore be severed from us. But then the wretched, the wretched man himself cried out with a fearsome voice saying, woe, woe for the seed that came together in my mother's womb for which I receive my body. He cried out a second time saying, a curse be the moment when my soul was joined to my body and a curse be he who gave me a body and soul. The third time he cried out, a cursed be the moment when I came forth alive from the womb of my mother. Then to cup it all, thinking about these voices, then came three horrendous voices from hell saying, come to us, accursed soul, like liquid copper draining down to eternal death and life everlasting. They call out a second time, come accursed soul, empty of all goodness, and receive our malice. The third time, come accursed soul, heavy like a stone that sinks down perpetually and never reaches the bottom where it can rest. You will sink deeper into the deep than we. So you will not stop until you have reached the lowest parts of hell. These are the sober words given by Jesus Christ in the revelations. You should read many more accounts like this to the great mystic Saint Bridget. Again, do not be worried if you are on the right side of the Lord. Listen well, but let your passage be a blue and marion passage through the gates of paradise, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, at the twilight of your life. Consecrate yourself to the Lady. She will be there as your advocate before the throne of God's mercy. She will speak for you with such tender and sweet words before Jesus Christ, her Son. She will say thus, this is my portion and inheritance concerning your soul. This is my portion and my inheritance. The Mother of Mercy then, the Virgin Mary, will speak and open up her mercy. For he who is to be judged, your very soul, truly worthy to receive and enjoy her mercy. Thus your soul will glide into paradise in the mantle of Mary to adore the most holy trinity for all eternity, amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.